Stefan, thanks for taking a few moments to join me. Um, we're here again to talk about IGBT Generation 7. Stefan, this feels like Groundhog Day. Why are we here to discuss this again? Because it is a great technology. And for us, it's a very important technology. Semicron uses uh, Generation 7 IGBTs from two different uh, suppliers, which brings us already to the first benefit, supply chain safety. Um, IGBT Generation 7 is a completely new IGBT generation with a completely new design, coming with very unique features, especially compared to the previous Generation 4. Um, for example, we have a 20% lower forward voltage drop, which can be directly utilized in the application uh, with a higher output current or with a higher efficiency. We have smaller chips, so the chips are in average 20 to 25% smaller compared to the previous generation, which means we can put a higher nominal current in the same kind of power packages. For example, we have here the Miniskeep housing size 2. This one um, contains a CIB topology with 50 amps. In the previous generations, we actually had to use the Miniskeep housing size 3 to get to the same nominal current. So there's a huge benefit on the power density side. Uh, we have higher reliability. The chips are more robust, especially in, in humid, humid uh, environments. And we have a built-in overload functionality. So the junction temperature, the maximum junction temperature has not really changed. It's 175 degrees. But the operation temperature now can be higher than 150 in certain limitations. In, in application, that can mean we have a, a possibility to have, a, for example, 10% overload for a minute um, that has not to be considered uh, additionally in the design itself. So the chips brings it with it. Okay. Um, Stefan, I think you mentioned CIB. Is IGBT7 then uh, particularly aimed at motor drive applications? Actually it is, especially the, the 1200 volt uh, version of the chip is aimed for motor drives. It comes also with unique features necessary for motor drive applications. We have a very good DVDT controllability. Usually that is the limiting factor in motor drives. Um, usually it's limited to something like three, four, five kilovolt per microsecond. So that's coming with it. We can switch the chip unipolar. That means we do not need a gate voltage in the negative range. Zero volt is uh, good enough to, to keep the, the switch safely turned off. Um, and so which packages then will the IGBT7 or IGBT Generation 7 be available in? First one we already saw, Miniskeep, that's our number one motor drive um, power module um, with more than 45 million uh, pieces out in the field running in uh, motor drive applications. Here we have a complete power range, CIB, um, six packs and half bridges from four to 400 amp. And that means basically we can uh, cover everything up to 110 kilowatt. Exceeding that power, we are getting in the range of the Semix 3 press fit, which is also uh, fully released and available. This one is basically in half bridge and uh, goes up to 700 amp and here the same uh, benefit. We had previous generations only 600 amp and now with the new generation 7 IGBT, we can actually extend the nominal current to 700. We have the Semix 6 press fit, which is uh, available from 75 to 250 amps in CIB and six pack in for the small power range. Again, we have the Semitop E1, E2, also CIB and six pack from 10 to 100 amps. Okay. Um, are there other applications besides motor drives where IGBT 7 would be interesting? Definitely. Um, we have, for example, wind applications. There we have our high power package, Semitrans 10. Um, this one is perfect for multi-level applications. There's a strong trend in the wind uh, application to increase the DC bus voltage and go to multi-level topologies. And with IGBT Generation 7 and Semitrans 10 in combination, we can create a three-level NPC topology that's good for 1.5 megawatt. Then also for solar, it is very interesting. Um, here we have a specific solar IGPT Generation 7 chip with 950 volt. That's good for 1500 volt DC bus and then perfect also for all kind of multi-level topologies. Okay, Stefan, thanks very much. It certainly was worth it. You're very welcome. Thank you very much.